Well, this is why I didn't really make too many videos about them. This is why I didn't really talk about the UFL at all during the first portion of the year, during most of the UFL season anyway. Um, another dominating performance by the Birmingham Stallions, their third straight championship. They have won to defeat the San Antonio Brahmas 25 to nothing in the UFL championship game. Absolutely disgusting. This game was, you know, scoreless for the first 29 and a half minutes. And then Birmingham finally got, you know, a touchdown. A couple of turnovers by San Antonio got them livid. You know, they had to bring in, you know, the, both quarterbacks and everything like that. Their running game was, you know, not there and everything like that. It, it was just rough to watch at times, you know. It was just rough to watch, you know. San Antonio, you know, you know they, they, had, they had to, you know, overcome St. Louis to get here. And a lot of people, you know, no, no, the narrative is that, oh, well, nobody showed up. It was, this is a neutral site game, and St. Louis was supposed to go to the, the, the title game real easy. Still, 27,000. And I believe that number is correct. That, that doesn't look like it's correct, but um, based off of what you see, but apparently that's the number that went to the UFL championship game in St. Louis. You know. San Antonio had to overcome St. Louis to get here, but I mean, really, you know, San Antonio just bullied St. Louis on the ground and everything like that. They couldn't get that. They couldn't do that against Birmingham, though. Just no offense at all. You know, Adrian Martinez beat the fraud allegation. You know, from you know having guys like Matt Corral step in as quarterback. You know, last week against Michigan, but ultimately, at the end of the day. Birmingham is officially a dynasty. And you look at the awards, Mike Nolan winning the coach of the year, Hakeem Butler, Raylan Sparks, and Chris Garrett all winning the other major awards for the UFL this year. And I know there's some guys on the all UFL team like Adrian Martinez and on the um, is a part of the all UFL team for quarterback who played it, who played really, really good for the most part. In the championship game, you know, when he was able to run, he ran, you know, when Birmingham was able to get some offense going, they got some offense going through him throwing the ball to Sternberger and the other cats on the Stallions squad. You know, I mean, it, this was a, um, again, I was, once this game started to get real ugly, you know, I was kind of tuned out, you know, once it started getting the 16 to nothing, I knew. Something was gonna. I knew something was gonna be, you know, happening, and it was not good. I mean, again, San Antonio had little life in this game, and now you look towards the future. You look towards the future. Are people going to? The, there's a couple things that you know we need to really get our get off our chest. The first thing is the UFL is gonna have a lot of games moved to Friday. Friday nights in 2025 on Fox. So on, it's going to be on Big Fox because, you know, SmackDown is moving um, to USA and Netflix and all that stuff, you know, there. Um, the other thing is, is are people going to stop crying about attendance? Are people going to stop crying about attendance? It's 2024. Not everybody can afford to go to a game every week. I don't understand where people are coming from with this. Oh, well, we need to pack the stands. Some people just don't want to go to a spring football game. Let's be real. You know, sub obviously there's another thing here is that maybe the UFL isn't marketing, you know, the greatest way because spring football has failed just like arena football has failed so many times, you know. The, 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 there's a limit to, to how much nonsense you can sell somebody before they quit. And, you know, do you do you think I can actually go out to Arlington? Absolutely not. I cannot find a way to get out to Arlington to save my life. But I might next year. I might. It's a big might because, you know, I'm, I'm planning some stuff for myself. For the rest of the year and everything like that but you know the ufl's momentum is definitely going to be intriguing to watch you know the viewership was stable fans 
know, went to two games in D.C. and, and St. Louis and, you know, San Antonio a little bit too. Uh, maybe not so much Michigan or Birmingham or, you know, Memphis or anything like that, maybe even Arlington. And, uh, you know, Houston. But, I mean, hey, the, focusing on these eight teams to 2025 is going to be very key. Um, I hope that, you know, I hope that everything looks a little bit better. Everything looks a little bit better because this year, you know, the, the couple of games that I did watch, you know, of course, you know, ESPN is not that great at doing sports telecasts anymore. But they 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 put in a decent effort. It's a decent effort, you know. Fox is all in because they own the UFL, so they're gonna have all that stuff. They even had a robotic dog out on the field today, and Kurt Warner, and Tom Brady in the booth for for a brief portion before he transitions to the NFL this year. You know, and it's it's and I mean. What the UFL, you know, there's another question here that the UFL can, you know, kind of, you know, say something about, but it's like, is does that even matter right now? You know, is that is the UFL a professional league or is it a developmental league? The, the, that's what people are trying to ask. And I think that's a little bit disingenuous because, I mean, some players have found their way to the NFL, but not all of them. So, you know, you can't say that this is really a developmental league. Can you say this is a pro league? Probably. I think you could say that. Um, you know, like Jake Bates getting signed to the Detroit Lions. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. He's already getting signed by somebody. Like, but yeah, some some guy. This is like this is this is going to be one interesting off season, just regardless for the UFL. I think. Again, I think. If things go well for 2025, we could start talking about expansion and stuff like that. We could start expanding. You know, I don't know about relocating teams yet. Um, maybe we can like relocate some teams to, like smaller venues. You know, that can actually sell out. I think that would be better. You know, some teams definitely need to go to smaller venues, like, like Memphis. Oh my god! Um, and I know I keep ragging on the showboats, but you know. It, it was putrid. It's putrid stuff sometimes from them. So um, that's it for me about the UFL this year. I know I didn't really get to say too much, but I definitely will in 2025. I don't know when that will start in 2025, but you can catch, you can look at all the videos that I've done for spring football for the UFL, the AAF, um, the USFL, and the XFL over the past four or five years. And, you know, again, there's been some times where I'm like, I'm not watching this. I'm not, I'm just not. And I mean, the championship game was going to be interesting to see, but it ultimately ended up not being interesting. A three peat is not what you want. It's pretty football. You definitely need the parody. I think that's the biggest thing. The biggest thing overall is that somebody needs to keep the Birmingham Stallions away from the UFL championship. But congrats to the Stallions, though. Third straight title. Third straight title. So that'll do it for me. And I'll see you all soon. I don't, don't know when the NBA finals are gonna end. Don't know when the NA don't know when the Stanley Cup is gonna end. Don't know, you know, when all that's gonna go down. But when it goes down, I will be here. So y'all take care and I'll see you soon.